Diana Pankova is a Ukrainian lawyer and journalist, and she's also decided to stay and fight. Take a look at what she posted. And Ukrainians very much are appreciative of their liberty, of their freedom. So it's definitely not going to happen here. We are just not capable of living in the same conditions and in the same mentality as Russian society is used to living in. Dina Pankova joins me live now from Ukraine. Dina, first and foremost, are you safe right now? Are you okay to be doing this interview? Well, relatively, I can call it safe. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, sometimes I can hear explosions and it's been pretty loud all night long. And um, basically a bomb hit uh, a house very close to the house of my family that lives on the other side of the city close to the airport. So I wouldn't really call it safe. So you're in Kharkiv, which is, you know, northeast Ukraine, and all of the reports we're getting over here, Diana, are that it is a wasteland, that that has sustained some of the heaviest fighting. And there you are. Um, you're staying and you're going to fight. Uh, I guess the best question would be why? Yes, I am staying because my family lives here because this is my home. And because if we're not going to fight, I guess we're just confirming that we don't mind anybody coming here and taking what we own and what we love the most. So I have seen reports of um, the government handing out weapons uh, and training people on weapons, just normal people like you who may have never picked one up before, showing people how to make Molotov cocktails right at home. Are you among that group doing what we're seeing on these pictures right on the screen? This is right, uh, but you definitely have to get some tests and just to make sure that you're going to be uh, handling the weapons responsibly. But I haven't had my weapon yet because I've been busy volunteering and helping people get some food because there's a lot of issues with the food distribution, with medication. So a lot of hospitals and orphanages, uh, they've been having a lot of issues getting food and transportation is very, very complicated right now because it's very dangerous uh, to transport food. So we're trying to help as much as we could. I imagine, Diana, it's dangerous to do a lot of things right now. And I'm curious as to how you are acting as a community do you do you have an underground do you have a strategic communication defense going on do you do you have a plan as a group or are you all acting individually what's the strategy everyone is very connected and very united right now we i guess we've never ever been united at, at the same level as right now and people are living in underground right now it, underground stations they bring food they share food to the people they've ever never ever met in their entire life but we are trying to help each other support each other no matter what because we understand that we are one people and we need to fight the situation to continue to live in the country we love the last time we you know had activity like this in europe was World War II, really. I mean, and back then the expression was women and children to safety. And yet we're seeing you, we're seeing Miss Ukraine, we're seeing lots and lots of women saying, we're not going to be among the now 500,000 and maybe upwards of several million who are leaving. How many of your friends, um, your colleagues, your your demo, the, the women your age are staying? And I, I mean, I'm looking at a picture of a grandmother training. How many women are staying this time around saying, we'll fight too? A lot of women are doing this. Basically, half of the people that are volunteering right now are women that I know. And also another interesting story that's happened was that a Ukrainian granny, she's very, very old age, and she has uh, offered some tea to Russian uh, occupants. And uh, they've had this tea and they felt a very urgent need to go to the 
bathroom and she set the bathroom on fire to help somehow our Ukrainian um, military fight. <laughs> and this is basically going to explain to you that our people are united and are going to do anything it takes to stand up to protect our home and fight back. And this is actually what's happening. Well, I, I hope that we can um, continue to get updates from you on a regular basis, Diana. I'm just sending you our heartfelt thoughts for safety and security and, um, and victory. I mean, that's a weird thing to say as a news person, but I really, I really feel for you and your neighbors what you're going through. Um, so stay in touch with us, okay? Very appreciative of that. Thank you so much. Diana Pankova joining us, and I think we're losing her signal right at the end of her interview, so I'm glad we got, I promise you, we will continue to check in with um, Diana on a regular basis to see how she's doing, and Kharkiv is not doing well. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.